Never in my life have I thought about having to describe myself as Faradik. In the last few years, we're seeing the ethnicity ghost, or in Hebrew, a shed adati, resurfacing in Israel. My mom immigrated to Israel with her family from Tripoli, Libya, and my father from Yemen. They didn't have the opportunity to continue their formal education past elementary school. I heard stories about their hardship in the Ma'abara. Ma'abaras are camps that were set up in Israel for new immigrants, mainly from North Africa and the Middle East in the 40s and 50s of the last century. They never complained about being discriminated, never dwelled on the past. They worked hard, most of the time, two jobs each. And they thought, and they brought us up with the notion that education is our number one priority. We didn't have money for any luxury or new clothes, but we had all the different encyclopedias and many books in the house. My parents were looking for a better future for us and they knew education is key. I grew up in Rishon Lezion, in an area that had kids from all origins. We were not Ashkenazi or Sephardic, we were just Israelis. I was a part of the Noor Oved youth movement, where I was a madricha, a counselor, and was part of the movement leadership. The only significance to where my parents came from was the fact that my friends always wanted to come over on Saturdays to eat jachnon, or on Tuesday to eat couscous. I studied industrial engineering and information system in the University of Tel Aviv, and I have been successful in my, in my career. With this background, I never felt different from the ones around me. I never felt that I had to overcome any obstacles to be treated like everyone. I hear with frustration the Likud members, Dudi Amsalem and Galit Disto. Usha! 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 Spreading hatred and working hard to add fuel to a flame that should not be there in the first place. The real, there are real problems that Israeli government should be dealing with, like the lack of opportunities in the remote areas of Israel, violence against women, violence against Ar in the Arab societies, poverty, the rising cost of living, peace with our neighbors, including the Palestinians, and many more issues they're trying to depress so they don't have to deal with. <laughs> Noam Chorev, an Israeli writer, wrote recently about the ethnicity issue. He wrote in Hebrew and I translated. How it angers and saddens the heart that there are people who ride on this pain, no matter how justified it may be, who poke and prod at it constantly to accumulate more political capital, to perpetuate the gap, making sure this wound will not heal, turn into a scar and let go of us. I'm also speaking today as a woman and a mother. My daughter is currently serving in the IDF as a combat search and rescue soldier. She moved to Israel as a lone soldier and is proud to serve a country that she grew up in until she was 11 years old. She came to serve in a military of a democratic and Jewish country that, and I'm quoting from Israel Declaration of Independence, maintain full equality of social and political rights for all its citizens without distinction of religion, race, and gender. The current government and the judicial coup are risking every aspect of democratic values. We made huge progress, huge progress with women's rights throughout the years, but now we are going backwards. The Lapid Bennett government had a record of 33% women minister. With this current, 
With this current government, the number dropped to 16. Not to mention that the number of women CEO in government office dropped from 10 to zero. The current government also wants to prevent women from serving in key positions in the army, ruling for segregation of women in public events, adding power to rabbinical courts, etc. The government also just voted against the electron electronic bracelet for violent men. Hello? A law that can save many women's and children's lives, but they simply don't care. Simcha Rotman, one of the leaders of the judiciary coup, recently said, the Supreme Court only allowed Alice Miller, who is the first Israeli women military pilot, to go to the Air Force combat pilot course just because she looks nice and looks like the neighbor's daughter. He also said that women are overrepresented in the Supreme Court. Every educated progressive women and men from both right or left should be protesting against these ideologies. With the judicial coup, women and minorities will have no one to protect them against basic human rights violation. Bibi said in his recent speech that we can trust him and his government to protect, to protect human life. How can we trust this radical, chauvinist, racist, and extremist government? Israel needs a strong Supreme Court to make sure the government have appropriate checks and balances. Israel, Israel has a woman as a Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and a woman as Attorney General. General, General sorry. If we allow the judicial coup to pass, we will never have women in these positions or any key positions again. Seeing the protest movement in Israel, fighting for groups and minorities, and bringing everyone who cares for Israel democracies under the same broad tent gives me hope that things would look different for my daughter and my sons. And with that, I would like to end with quoting Noam Horev again. Maybe our generation is the one who will be able to finally close this wound. Let's prove that we're stronger than them, that we know how to recognize and remember the wrongs that have been done. Not to leave the past behind, but carry it with us and together with it, to know how to let go and move on. Maybe will be the springboard to stop this madness, to stop this fear, stop this hate, and we finally bring some peace between us. Yeah. Yeah.